Hello. Today I'm going to synthesize butyric acid by oxidizing butanol in a mixture of chromate and sulfuric acid. First of all, let's get some fresh butanol, as this bottle I have is very old. A few scales of potassium hydroxide are added to remove any organic acids present. Then, a small beaker is placed in order to collect and discard the first fraction of distillate. In organic chemistry labs, it is quite common to distill the reagents prior to the synthesis procedure, and in my case it was quite convenient. As you can see here, my bottle contained more than just butanol. It was boiling almost 10 degrees below its boiling point. Almost 50 milliliters was discarded, and the rest was collected in a separated bottle. Luckily, the remainder was easily washed from the sides of the glass with a little bit of acetone. I was pretty sure that my distillate contained water, so I added some anhydrous sodium sulfate. This compound is often used as a drying agent for solvents, as it forms a decahydrate, trapping the water molecules present in the organic phase. After a few hours, the drying agent was removed by gravity filtration, and the butanol was distilled again. Finally, I got a much better grade alcohol to start with the synthesis. The first step is to prepare the oxidant solution. For this, 36 grams of potassium dichromate is dissolved using a total of 120 milliliters of distilled water. Gentle heat is needed in order to completely dissolve it. It is then transferred into the reaction flask. Then, the reducing solution is prepared. First, 16 ml of water is measured with a graduated pipette, and after lowering the temperature with an ice bath, 27 ml of sulfuric acid is then added carefully. The mixture is allowed to cool down in the ice bath, as this process is highly exothermic, as you can see. Then, 15 ml of butanol is added to the diluted acid. This is the apparatus I set up for the reaction. The reducing solution is placed on the dropping funnel and the steering is turned on. Since the reaction is exothermic, heating is not needed. The reflux condenser prevents any loss of reaction volume by evaporation. Let's start the reaction. The dropping funnel is adjusted to deliver one drop every two seconds. This is key in order to control the reaction. Here you can see both general and stoichiometric reactions. What is happening is that hexavalent chromium in the presence of sulfuric acid oxidizes the primary alcohol to produce a carboxylic acid. In the process, it is reduced to trivalent chromium, which is green in solution, hence the change in color. The oxidant is in a 10% excess so that all the butanol is oxidized. The addition of the alcohol took place over 90 minutes in total after which it was set up for a reflux for another two hours. By doing a reflux, it is ensured the reaction is completed. Unfortunately, this procedure has the disadvantage of producing a side product, which is what appears here as white fumes. As soon as some butyric acid is produced, in the presence of fresh butyl alcohol and sulfuric acid, some butyl butyrate is produced. Butyl butyrate is a volatile compound that forms an azeotrope with water, which is what you are seeing here. I had to add some ice to the water circuit to counteract the fumes. After that, the condenser begins to work properly. Two hours later, the reaction is completed. Now I need to separate the butyric acid from the reaction mixture. Luckily, butyric acid forms an acetrope too, which means that it can be distilled out while all the chromium, potassium and sulfates remain in the flask. The setup is arranged and the heat is turned on. By how the drops interact with the glass, an organic phase is definitely present. Butyl butyrate should distill too and form a separate phase above water. I had to add more water as the volume is too small in the flask. Eventually, I stopped the distillation as I got enough distillate to fill up the collecting flask. Here you can clearly see the presence of an organic phase. 
First, I transfer the distillate into a 500 ml separating funnel. The idea is to perform successive liquid-liquid extractions to isolate the butyric acid. Here is the organic phase floating on top of the water. In the meantime, I recovered a little more of the distillate, just in case. After letting the phases separate for a few minutes, the bottom aqueous phase is decanted, leaving a small volume of water in the funnel. Then, the organic phase is washed three times with saturated sodium chloride solution. For that, the funnel is stopped and shaken gently first and vigorously after while opening the stopcock to release any pressure that may have built up inside. Then, and same as before, it is allowed to separate and the aqueous phase is decanted and added to the previous fraction. This is repeated two more times. Once done, the organic phase is collected in a test tube to get an idea of how much gel was lost. A few spatulas of anhydrous sodium sulfate are added to try to dry it. After letting it sit for a few minutes, it is filtered using a pasture pipette with a cotton plug into a pre-weighed glass vial. I didn't mention it, but this side product smells quite good, reminiscent of tropical scent but a lot more concentrated. The vial is then capped and stored for weighing purposes. Now we need to get the butyric acid from the water solution. To do this, I check the pH, as I am going to extract any side product present using an organic solvent. I need the pH to be above 4.82, which is the pKa value. In these conditions, all the butyric acid is converted into butyrate, which is insoluble in the organic solvent I will be using later. That way, it remains in the aqueous phase, so I can get any other side products or unreacted reagents out of solution. Here I am adding 5% sodium bicarbonate solution, but I ended up adding it directly into the beaker until the pH was above 8. The formation of CO2 gas indicates the presence of an acid in solution, which means we are on the right track. Eventually, gas formation stops upon addition of more bicarbonate, and the pH is high enough to continue. It is transferred back into the separating funnel and extracted three times with 10 ml of ethyl acetate. These organic fractions are discarded, and then the volume of the aqueous phase is reduced by boiling it. Also, the extra distillate is added to that phase. It doesn't contain any organic phase, so presumably only a little of butyric acid is present, which again is converted in its conjugate salt, the butyrate, confirmed by a quick pH test. The volume is reduced to about 100 ml and just in case it is then extracted once with 10 ml of ethyl acetate. And now the last extraction procedure. In order to extract the desired product, it is necessary to convert the butyrate back into its acid form. And here is where the fun begins, because it smells quite strongly. Here I'm using 50% sulfuric acid solution to reach a pH below the pKa of butyric acid. The pH is tested several times between additions until it reached a value of around 2. After that, it is then extracted a total of 10 times using 10 ml of ethyl acetate each. In order to force the butyric acid to transfer to the organic phase, 50 ml of saturated sodium chloride solution is added. A small volume of the organic phase is allowed to pass through to try to minimize the amount of aqueous phase that goes into the Erlenmeyer flask used to collect all the organic fractions. As said, the procedure is then repeated 9 times more. Here are all the organic fractions. There is some water at the bottom, so I'm getting rid of that by doing a final extraction with 25 ml of saturated sodium chloride solution. Brine is used to pull water from the organic phase without extracting too much of the desired compound. Now the organic phase is clearer, as it contains less water than before. It is then separated slowly and the organic phase is pulled through the top of the funnel into a clean Erlenmeyer flask.
After that, it is dried using an hydrosodium sulfate. Note how the drying agent gets wet and sticks to the bottom of the iron mayer. That means more drying agent needs to be added, as more water is present in the organic phase. Eventually, the salt is loose and does not stick to the glass anymore, so no more is needed. It is then covered with plastic wrap and allowed to rest until the next day, as the process of hydration of the drying agent is slow. Time to filter it up. This time, a small cotton plug is used instead of paper, to prevent too much solvent remaining in the filter, as the product is quite smelly. Then, the ethyl acetate is removed with distillation using a water bath first. When the temperature drops from the boiling point of ethyl acetate, the apparatus is changed to distill it using an air condenser. The heat is turned on and special attention must be paid to the thermometer to monitor the process. Some leftover acyl acetate comes first. Also, wet paper must be changed with a fresh one several times as it gets hot very quickly. After some time, the temperature surpasses 100 degrees Celsius, so the collecting phase is changed to collect a new fraction of distillate. It is collected until a few milliliters of liquid remain in the boiling flask. The temperature reaches 145 degrees Celsius, which is still below the boiling point of butyric acid. Finally, here it is. A small volume of very rancid, cheesy and sharp smelling liquid. It is then transferred into a pre-weighed glass vial for storage. In the end I got a total of 6.140 grams of product, which represents a 42% yield. The yield is a little above what I found in literature, and only 10% was lost in the butyl butyrate side product route. I am sure it is not pure, but it is decent enough for my next project, in which I will convert this into a very good smelling compound. That's all for this video, I'll see you in the next one and, as always, don't forget to enjoy our hobbies. Thanks for watching me, if you learned something or simply want to support me, you can do it by clicking this link to my Patreon page here or in the description box.